I'm going to jump into the Word. I'm excited about sharing this morning. I do know it is 1123, so you're going to have to listen fast, and I'm going to talk fast, and, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll share with you what the Lord has placed in our heart for today. Uh, Joshua chapter number 6, if you have your Bibles, please turn there uh, this morning. Joshua chapter number 6. And uh, we are going to just uh, dive in together uh, this morning. How many is excited about going to the river today? Amen. Amen. That's always a wonderful time. I'm looking forward to it. Excited for those that's uh, getting ready to, uh, to, to participate in that service. And everyone is invited to go with us and, uh, and experience that with us. We'd love to have everyone that can uh, come be part of that with them, all right? Uh, I'm going to read uh, the first five verses of Joshua chapter 6, and then we'll give you a backstory of what leads up to this, and then we'll read uh, verse 10 through 16 in just a little bit. But uh, I'm going to try to cover a whole lot of ground this morning, and I'm going to give you a series in about 35 minutes. Don't you check your watch. I don't want to be held accountable if I go over 35 minutes. And uh, so... Uh, but we're going to do our best this morning. So I am, uh, if the Lord will help me this morning, I'm going to preach for a little bit uh, and speak on preparing for the blast. Preparing for the blast. Joshua chapter number 6, verse number 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. Somebody say because of the children of Israel. That, that's important that we understand that this morning. None went out. None came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, somebody say see. See. I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And you shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horn. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Let's go ahead and go to verse number 9 through verse number 16. Simply says, when we get to the right passage, let's do verse number 10. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day that I bid you shout, then shall you shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about at once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord, and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went before them. But the rearward came after the ark of the Lord, and the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned to the camp, and they did this the first six days. But then in verse number 15, And it come to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it come to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. Now, I, I know that we've heard this story. We've, we've looked at it throughout our lives and we've studied it. We've heard it preached on many different things. But in order for us to have a true understanding of what's really taking place in this scripture, we must walk through history very quickly. We find that years prior to this, leading up to this event, Exodus chapter number 3, Moses is on the backside of the desert taking care of his father-in-law's sheep. We find that the angel of the Lord appears to him. 
in a flame of fire in the midst of a bush. The bush was not consumed. Therefore, he turned aside and said, I want to see what this is. When he turned, it was not uncommon for a bush to be burning in the desert. That wasn't really uncommon. But what was uncommon, this particular bush was not been consumed by the fire. When he turned, he heard the voice of the Lord said, take your shoes off, you're on holy ground. And therefore, then he has this encounter in verse number 7. The Lord says, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and to a large land that is flowing with milk and honey under the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites, the Amorites and the Persicites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. He's simply saying this, I have heard and I have seen and therefore I am responding. Now, you know the story. I don't have to give you every detail, but let's run through it very quickly. The man of God says, who am I that the Pharaoh would listen to me? And he says, I am going to give you a voice. Know this, certainly I will be with you every step of the way. But he simply says, I am going to give you uh, a word to say, you go speak it, tell him to let my people go, but I am going to harden his heart. And he's not going to let my people go, but I still want you to stand in obedience and I want you to speak that which I speak. And we know that through the ten plagues, that finally on the last plague, the Pharaoh says, you got to leave. you got to get out of here. There was a shifting. There was a purging of the land. There was many things that was going on. We could talk about the ten idol worshiper gods that, they, that those plagues represent, but we don't have time for all of that today. But we find today that through this process uh, that then there's a release that comes. They go out, they spoil the Egyptians. They go out, and now an 11-day journey turns into a 40-year journey. You know the story. But we find that when you fast forward just a little bit after leaving the land of, of the Egyptians, uh, the Lord begins to speak to Moses again. In, no, in Numbers chapter number 10, the Lord spoke to Moses in verse number 1, and he simply said this. Uh, he said, uh, the Make thee two trumpets of silver of a whole piece, shalt thou make them, that thou mayest use them for the calling and the assembling and for the journeying of the camps. And when you read through Numbers chapter 10, you will find that he says, if you make a certain sound, then the right side will come. Or a, a certain group of the tribes will come. You make another blast, and a, it, then they will come. But if you make another blast, everybody comes for the assembly. But then if there's a specific sound, then it's time for us to pick up and begin to take the journey. Therefore, there was significance about the trumpets that was made. They was made out of silver. Silver always represents redemption. And we find that as this journey begins, to, they are led by the redempting sound that comes from the trumpets that are made. Now, as they begin to travel through uh, the wilderness in this manner, we find that many things happen. And in the midst of this happening, we find that now Moses is looking. He sees the promised land, but the Lord says, you're not going in because of some of your behavior back here, but I'll let you see it. Uh, but then we find that Moses dies. Then you come to Joshua chapter number 1, and we find that there begins to be an acceleration. We find in Joshua chapter number 1, the word of the Lord comes. It says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it come to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, saying this, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go out over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Verse number 5, there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Uh, verse number 8 says, the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have have good success. But if you was to read verse number six, he said, be strong and of good courage. Can I tell somebody this morning, just be strong and of good courage. I don't think he got it this morning. Just tell your neighbor, it's not a time to be weary, but it's a time to be strong and of good courage. We are in a place right now where many things are happening. But let, I, let me tell you something. 
there is something happening that we don't yet see. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but just stay with me just for a moment. We find that after Joshua begins to go, you get to chapter number three. He simply says this to the people. I'll paraphrase for the sake of time. Sanctify yourself when you see the ark of the Lord begin to pass by you because you've never been this way before. Don't get too close to it, but the priest is getting ready to pick up the ark. Uh, They're going to walk over there, step into the Jordan that's out of its banks at this season. Uh, But you're going to see the Lord do wondrous things in your presence tomorrow. Therefore, we find that the miracle working power of God comes and the Lord says to Joshua, I am going to establish you this day. Now, you know the story. They stepped in, the waters come back on a heap, they cross over. Uh, Then we know that there's 12 stones taken out of that. Then there's a memorial built. uh, And they said, don't ever forget what God has done for you today. And then we find that they continue to press on. They continue to move forward. By the time they began to get to chapter number five, uh, we find that it says it come to pass that the kings of the Amorites, uh, which were on the other side of the Jordan, westward, and all of the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, uh, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan. Notice what happened. And they heard that they dried them up before the children of Israel until they were passed over and their hearts melted. Neither was there a spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. These are mighty men of valor. And all of a sudden they're sitting there and they say, I don't have anything left. Did you hear, did you see what God did for his people over there? An impossible passageway opened up and now they're not on the other side of the Jordan but they're on this side of the Jordan uh, and we are in their path and therefore uh, we, we there's something bigger than us. Uh, listen, isn't it ironic uh, that us as people of God don't realize how powerful God is but the world does? They was looking from an outward position and they said, man, uh, something's changing. Uh, Something's not right. Uh, Can I tell you right now the toil of this season uh, is going to give way to a supernatural release? I'll go on record and say that this morning, uh, that we are in a time or a season of advancement uh, that is drawing the church nearer to Jesus Christ uh, than we have ever known in our lifetime. That's why after a midweek service, uh, when everybody's tired, uh, that our young people can get in a car driving home, uh, listening to worship, uh, and begin to have the automobiles surrounded, engulfed uh, by the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, Somebody ought to give God praise for that this morning. And I'm not talking about a patty cake praise. I'm talking about somebody exalting the name of Jesus. Can I say to you this morning, we must operate with great sensitivity concerning the Holy Ghost in this season. The Lord is speaking clearly to his children. And let me remind you this morning, his instructions are not mere suggestions, but they are commandments. Through the voice of the fivefold ministry, he has instructed his church in this season to enter into a time of prayer, fasting, and to repent and to return to his word. That is the message that's going forth and is still going forth. You may ask, why is that so? I'm so glad that you asked because James chapter 4 verse number 10 says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. The church could not be lifted up in the current condition that it was. Uh, It had to be humbled. Uh, And that's why he sends saying, uh, you gotta go to that place of prayer, uh, that place of fasting, that place of the word. Uh, Listen, uh, due to the obedience of many around the globe this morning, uh, this behavior has caused and is still causing uh, a stirring uh, on the planet as we speak. Uh, Let us remember this morning, uh, we are not fighting against flesh and blood uh, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, uh, principalities and powers of evil uh, can I tell you this morning uh, you are not on the love boat this morning uh, but you are on the ship uh, of Zion uh, and yes it's got battle scars and yes the ships are torn, the waves are torn or the, torn the, the, the things and the, and the mask in the wind uh, but this morning can I tell you uh, it's still sailing uh, it's still moving, uh, it is 
has not been sunk uh, and this morning uh, we're about to experience something greater uh, than we've ever experienced. Uh, much of what we're seeing today, uh, please hear me, uh, is a plan of God. Uh, it is not only to awaken a generation, uh, but it is to set a generation free. Uh, and can I remind you this morning, uh, he that the sun sets free uh, is free indeed. Uh, listen, uh, God is not concerned uh, about bringing a visitation to your children. Uh, he's concerned about bringing freedom to your children. Uh, he's not concerned uh, about them uh, feeling a little goosebump on their spine, uh, but he's concerned about their deliverance this morning. Uh, he doesn't want somebody to see him far off, uh, but he wants a generation to be engulfed uh, by his presence uh, and by his anointing. Uh, this morning, I'm going to preach just for a few moments. Uh, not only uh, do we need to understand uh, that times are changing, uh, we got to understand God is changing us. Uh, and that means there's some things that's got to be removed from us uh, so that other things can be deposited in us. Uh, allow me this morning to tell you uh, that we are in a time of selective judgment. Uh, yes, I said the word judgment. Uh, selective judgment has been released uh, much like what happened to Egypt uh, in the days of Joshua and Moses. Uh, notice with me, uh, let's go on a journey. Uh, not only did the cry of the children of Israel uh, come up before him, uh, but the evil of Pharaoh and the Egyptians uh, also came before him. Uh, if you reread chapter 3 in Exodus verse 7 through 10, uh, you'll find uh, what he said uh, to Moses. He said, yes, I've heard their cry, uh, but I've also seen their affliction. Uh, he said, I've saw the evil. Uh, I saw all of the junk that's been happening to them. Uh, and yes, their cry has touched my heart. Uh, but also, uh, what I saw taking place towards my people uh, has moved me to action. Uh, can I tell you, there's been some stuff that's been happening under the current, uh, happening towards the church. Uh, men and women uh, have been attacking uh, the establishment that God has ordained uh, for years in very subtle ways. Uh, and God says, I've saw it uh, and no longer am I going to permit it. Uh, listen, my friend, uh, let us understand. Uh, like then, uh, he has given promises and made covenant with his people, uh, and he is a covenant keeping God. Uh, oh, uh, what many fail to understand uh, is that we are in a time of advancement uh, due to the prophetic calendar that we find ourselves in. Uh, we are currently in this very moment uh, living in the days that the prophets wrote about. Uh, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Uh, listen upon your handmaids. Uh, listen, what am I talking about? Uh, while this has turned many things upside down uh, in recent weeks and months, uh, including the church. Uh, I am not here full of doom and gloom this morning, uh, but I've got a stirring, uh, I've got an excitement uh, because God is permitting uh, and orchestrating uh, the release of spiritual authority. Uh, God has allowed uh, the closing of cities, uh, states, and nations, uh, hear me, uh, which has led to the disruption uh, of every avenue of life uh, from the workplace uh, to the favorite pastime uh, to the entertainment industry uh, to the sport coliseum setting idol uh, and yes even to the church buildings across the nation uh, that is sitting in darkness this morning uh, we have not seen such a disruption uh, in the United States of America uh, since the great depression uh, but God uh, tell your neighbor this morning uh, but God Oh, listen, uh, you better be glad I don't have an hour and a half to preach this morning. Uh, I hope you're listening fast. Uh, but God, uh, it is in this season that God himself uh, is moving uh, in an unprecedented way. Uh, listen, uh, your three songs and your sermon, uh, he is not impressed by that. Uh, listen, uh, he doesn't want you uh, to just go through religious formality. Uh, but he's simply saying, uh, I'm doing something new. Uh, the song 
songs sometimes we sing. Something's moving, something's changing. Can I go ahead and say that to you this morning? Something's moving and something's changing. Listen, it wasn't on your calendar, it wasn't on mine, it wasn't on the world schedule. And listen, my friend, Joshua had never seen it in this manner before. And we have never saw it on this manner before. But I heard the Lord say in recent days, I'm going to go ahead and put myself out there one more time. Is that all right? I heard the Lord say great walls of opposition are coming down. Men in places of high authority have become enclosed inside their fortified places. A spirit of fear is sweeping the globe because they are seeing things that they cannot explain. All of this while these individuals are looking on in the midst of everything. There is a group of blood bought saints of God across the globe that refuse to be denied. Let's resurrect that old hymn. I will not be denied. Listen, I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do, but I refuse to be silent this morning because I know in my innermost depths that God is moving and God is changing. I'm going to go ahead and preach it this morning. Oh, listen, I hear the Lord calling us to just do what we've been doing. He says, just keep circling. I said, what in the world do you mean, God? Keep circling. I go back to where I started this morning. Joshua chapter number six. Joshua, take the people. There's Jericho. It's a great walled city. It's a fortified city. Nobody can penetrate it. The walls are too wide and they're too tall. Nobody can get there. There's no way. The way that it's structured, you can't defeat it is what the world says. But God said this early in the morning. I want you to get up. I want you to get the priest. I want you to give them some trumpets. I want you to get the ark, which is my presence. I want you to get it positioned right. I want you to get some men in front of it, men behind it. I want you to begin to blow the trumpet. I want you to walk around that city and I want you to begin to just do what I tell you to do. I don't want anybody speaking. I don't want anybody murmuring and complaining. I don't know. I don't want any of that. I just want them to fall in line with what God is doing. So every morning, the first morning, the second morning, the third morning, the fourth and the fifth and the sixth, all of a sudden, every morning early, some of you still sleeping early. They was getting up and they was doing what they needed to do. They began to walk around Jericho. As they walked around, all of a sudden, fear is gripping the men that's in Jericho. Nobody's coming in. Nobody's going out. Nobody really knows what's going on. There is a COVID-19 that just about just a few months ago, nobody knows what's going on. We got experts of things that had only just now existed supposedly, but yet they're experts. But this expert opinion is everybody got to stay. Nobody can move. We got to shut this down. We got to do this. We got to do that. Nobody know. Hearts are filled with fear this morning. I'm not making light of the disease. I know it's real. I understand that, but please hear me. But men have been that thought they could do what they wanted, when they wanted, how they wanted. Now we're sitting in their fortresses. Nobody coming in. Nobody going out. Isn't that strange? Listen, airlines are going bankrupt. Listen, entertainers, it's gotten so bad. Your favorite singing group is now leasing their, their big old million dollar buses, wanting you to use it so you can take your family on a vacation because they don't have no use for it. And they're trying to get revenue somehow, some way. Listen, there is something changing, something moving. Nobody wants to do anything. Oh, I can't go here and I can't go there. Why? It's because the world, when the church was still just singing three songs and a message, somebody in places of authority began to look over the horizon and they saw something in the spiritual realm that the church missed. They saw a 
a dust cloud uh, of his presence. Uh, they didn't understand it. Uh, they don't know what it's really about. Uh, but they said, oh, uh, we can't keep doing what we used to do. Uh, everything is changing. Uh, everything is moving. Uh, something's different. Uh, so we got to shut this down. Uh, we can't do what we've always done. Uh, and now we find uh, that by the end of April, uh, uh, we found that the nation uh, and the nations of the world uh, was about isolated. Hear me, I gotta slow down just for a moment. Number one, to take a breath. Number two, to get my thoughts, uh, because I don't wanna miss something this morning. Uh, We find uh, that in this moment of history, there was something orchestrated by God that began to cause everything to halt. A spirit of fear has now reached our nation. But let me speak to the church for a moment. He did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. All the while, I hear the Lord begin to say, just tell them to keep circling. I begin to think, what do we mean by that? Now look at this story. For six days, they circled. Nothing changed. Nothing happened, but the Lord gave specific instructions. Joshua tell the people to say nothing, but just let the priest get the possession of the trumpets. Let someone grab the ram's horn. Let them grab the Ark of the Covenant and just walk. What they didn't realize is they were setting the stage for the supernatural to be on display. And their obedience began. Well, they didn't realize every time they walked around, their obedience began to cause those strongholds and those walls to begin to loose their... I'm a firm believer. This is just how my mind works. Can I give you Ron's version right now? Just for 30 seconds. Ron's version is that every time the people of God's foot touched down, there was a shaking of the foundation that was built by men. And for six days, there's a foundation shaking below the earth that nobody ever saw. But on the fourth day, with the shout of the people uh, and the vibration of the horn that was represented of spirit and man coming together in that manner, the foundation of man was not able to stand. Now, On the sixth day, they circle. They go back to their camp. But then you read, on the seventh day, very, and it says the first six days they got up very early. But you read it and really read it, it says on the seventh day they got up very early before the dawning. On the seventh day, there was anticipation. You got to realize that many people they ain't been allowed to talk for six days. Yeah. They said the seventh day can't get here soon enough because I got some stuff to say. If something don't change now, Joshua, he going to hear from me today. Listen, I know some of you. If something don't change, I'm going to. Listen, the seventh morning, they're up. They wasn't concerned about biscuits and gravy. They wasn't concerned about anything else, but they was concerned about, man, Joshua was saying that today we get us here and we get us heal and experience a great shout. We get to use our voice. We get to do something that we haven't done for six days. And there was anticipation. But notice, and he said this, the instructions, when you read the instructions, he said, listen, he said, you're not allowed to say anything, but when you begin to turn, but on the seventh day, When I bid you, I want you to shout with a great shout because the walls are going to come down. And then every man is going to go straight up. There was a change of direction that was coming the seventh day. I wish I had time to preach this series this morning. Listen, we find, and you know the story. They walk around seven times. First six times, just like it had been for the first six days. Nothing really changing other than the trumpets blowing. Nothing, nobody saying a word. But inside this fortress city, men and women are gripped with fear. Nobody moving, nobody doing anything. 
And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they've heard the trumpets blowing. I don't know what Joshua did. Maybe he had some men on horses that began to run around and say, hey, get ready. It's about that time. You're getting ready to hear the blast. And when you hear this blast, that's your signal for a great shout. Don't want no normal shout, but I want a great shout. He said, you're getting ready to hear basically what he was saying is you've heard these silver trumpets for 40 years. They've played in a specific manner. They've played this tune. They've played that tune. They've made this alarm and they made this alarm. But there is a blast that's getting ready to be delivered from a ram's horn that you have not yet heard. But when you hear that, you're going to shout with a great shout. And in that moment, you're going to stop circling. And you're going to begin to advance. And you're taking new territory. You're taking a city that people said never could be taken. Hear me this morning. I hear the Lord saying, there is a blast that is about to go forth. And the sound is going to give birth to a change of direction. No longer will you and I be going in a circular pattern. But we are going to go straight up towards the fortified places. Here's what I sense the Lord told me in my spirit. And this part of the message is not a political message. Tell your neighbor he's not been political. Now, y'all don't believe that at all, so tell him again. He's not been political. I'm not been political this morning. But I'm going, to, I'm going to speak to you what God showed me in my spirit. I believe that much like in the days of Joshua where he was in a seven cycle. His was seven days. The Lord has showed me seven months. Seven is always completion. But let me remind you that the number seven is always followed by number eight, which is always representation of a new beginning. Okay. So stay with me. By the end of March, because for several months, the last couple of years, there has been the saints of God, the remnant has been in a time and season of prayer. Many in this house have been part of that. And our prayers had been bringing us to a place that we did not fully understand and oftentimes maybe felt like it was not even noticed. But come March, our prayers basically took us to a Jordan. And we began to see this Jordan open up and we've crossed over. But now we're standing outside symbolically saying we have been found ourselves outside of a Jericho a place that is impassable, a place that we can't get over. But in March, we arrive here. And the Lord has simply called the church since then across the globe and especially across this nation to a place of prayer and fasting. What he was simply saying, I want you to pray, I want you to fast, I want you to read my word. Anybody in this room heard those words in your spirit? The Lord saying, you got to come and spend time with me. you got to spend time on my words. you got to pray. you got to fast. Anybody in this room uh, can testify that way. I can testify that way. That's how God has called me to. It's happened all across the globe. And I said, God, why are we doing the same thing? God put us into a circular pattern because where we're getting ready to go is a fortified place and we do not have the ability in ourselves to take it. And therefore, that's why we just have to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Notice with me, he's working in sevens. The end of March, everything in this nation was pretty much closed down. So we've got April, May, June, July. We just now come in August. Last four months, we have circled. Okay? August, September, October. That gets us seven months. God showed me seven months. There is something that's getting ready to be completed at the end of October in the spiritual realm. You say, what is getting ready to happen by the end of October? I'd like to be sitting where you are right now so I didn't have to be in this hot seat, but I just got to obey the Lord, all right? By the end of October, we are going to see a dramatic shift in many things. But we are going to see that which I've preached on for three years now. I believe we're getting ready to see 
the wagon wheels fall off and there is a reemerging of the Red Sea waters coming and there's a fresh as the Holy Spirit that's getting ready to come but before it comes there is great destruction coming on many different levels so what I'm saying is this we've got this is what I believe for three more months we're gonna circle for three more months we gotta be in place of prayer fasting and his word because our prayer our fasting and a spending time in the word is drawing us into a place where God not is just working on us but he is still doing what he's wanting to do in the realm outside of us because can I tell you there is people that are not sleeping well right now in the church world as well as government as well as major corporations there has been such evil and there's been such deception and can I tell you that there is getting ready to be a great exposing and I get no glory of saying that but I understand right now when I walk around in public and I sense in certain places such a heaviness, such a spirit of fear. Listen, we are not of this world, but we are in this world. And we have to make sure we don't let stuff get on us. And you could not afford to have a spirit of fear get on you the remainder of this year. Because can I tell you, we are getting ready to experience something that's out of this world. Listen, there is, while, while Joshua and them circled for six days and on the seventh day something transpired I believe that as we go into the fall of this year we're going to continue to hear and see men in isolated places in isolated formats and because of that there begins to be the, the re and I think just as I said earlier there is some foundations that men have laid that thought they could never be penetrated but because of the prayer of the saints there is shaking there is undercurrents going on right now listen this whole world is in groaning right now the earth is shaking this morning I got an alert on my phone North Carolina South Carolina Tennessee they felt a 5.1 earthquake that is not normal folks can I tell you and uh, this whole earth is groaning uh, why is that uh, is because of anticipation uh, of what God is doing but also of God is saying I'm removing I'm removing some things I'm shaking some things below the surface uh, things are going to begin to be released and exposed what am I saying this morning uh, seven always means completion uh, this time that we find ourselves in there is an exposing of evil but yet there is a shout that's getting ready to come for, the, for four months, we've saw the intensity grow. We see this today all around us. Uh, men and women are getting more anxious. They're getting more irritated. Uh, they're getting more frustrated. Uh, what are we talking about? A lot I'm saying is if you do not faint, uh, we are just a few short weeks away from hearing and experiencing something wonderful. Uh, I believe we all know what takes place in November. Uh, I'm not endorsing uh, a political party, but I'm going to tell you something this morning. Uh, we have a problem in this nation uh, this nation yes I celebrate it I love it I'm glad I get a call at home uh, but we have left our foundation uh, we have left the principles uh, and now uh, we think we could do whatever we wanted in the nostrils of God uh, we become nothing more than a vile snitch uh, listen uh, when in California we kill 364 babies every day in the womb that aims out to where one out of every four pregnancies in California is a boy to listen uh, that's a major problem uh, when we're killing all just under a million babies a year that's a problem uh, when we got men and women in the platform today that's ordaining uh, same-sex marriage that's a problem uh, when we begin to say that God uh, accepts sin that's a problem uh, listen uh, when we get to the place where we're so out of sorts with the word of truth uh, that's a problem uh, but God says I am going to bring back uh, in this hour in this season uh, in the midst of everything uh, I'm going to show my people uh, my glory uh, you say what are you talking about what we don't understand and I'm hurrying right now uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to wrap this up uh, what we find ourselves is doing uh, is the Lord is speaking uh, and he's speaking in this manner uh, and that's why you're going to be called to a place of prayer and fasting in his word God is calling forth uh, his people uh, to get in alignment to sanctify themselves uh, because the ark of the covenant which is a picture of his glory uh, God says I'm getting ready to let my glory pass before you 
Don't miss this. Uh, and we find that in chapter number three of Joshua, when the glory came, uh, the Jordan parted. Uh, when the glory began to circle, uh, the walls of Jericho began to crumble. Uh, what am I saying? Uh, God is taking us to a place uh, through prayer, through fasting, uh, through his word, uh, where we're being positioned uh, to experience his glory. Uh, and when his glory is present, uh, everything else has to crumble. Uh, everything else, listen, here's what's happening. Uh, and they don't like it. And this, and I don't have time to preach this this morning. Uh, but I was, t- I, and I, I went to home, went to bed last night. Uh, when I laid down, the Lord just began to download in me. Uh, and he began to say, what is happening uh, in America right now uh, is simply I am bringing uh, my glory back. Uh, and what's happening is the glory has been brought in uh, just like what happened when they brought the ark in and set up by Dagon. Uh, anybody remember that story? I saw that in the spirit. Uh, I saw the ark of the covenant come in uh, and sit down. Uh, and I saw it sitting by Dagon. Uh, and then I saw the hands and the head fall off. Uh, right now in this nation, uh, idols uh, are getting their hands cut off. Man, I feel the spirit of God. Uh, and I'm here to tell you by the end of October, uh, there's some heads coming off. Uh, there's some feet getting cut off. Uh, there's some hands getting cut off of idols. Uh, and men are going to be exposed. Uh, and I don't like that, but I'm here to tell you, uh, in the midst of the exposing, uh, is there is a manifestation of the glory of God. Uh, men and women are going to begin to look and say, uh, truly, uh, it is him. Uh, truly, uh, he is the son of God. Uh, and can I tell you, uh, by the end of October, going into November, uh, there is about to be a sound in the spirit. Uh, man, I need, I wish I had told Ryan to get his trumpet out uh, because of the simple fact uh, is I believe that at the end of uh, October, uh, going in the first of November, uh, in the spiritual realm, uh, there is going to be a blast made uh, in the spiritual realm, uh, and that's going to give uh, a cause for the people to shout with a great shout. Uh, and I listen, this ain't to be political, uh, but I believe part of the great shout uh, is when men and women uh, said we've had enough with a lot of stuff, uh, and they're going to go in and pull a lever that nobody's thinking about in a voting booth, uh, and I believe there's getting ready to be a major disruption in the government side, uh, but at the same time, uh, there is uh, some Gideons uh, that's been behind a wine press uh, that God's about to enlist into their care a few hundred men uh, and they're about to raise up and become a mighty army. Uh, I feel like I'm in the presence of an army this morning. Uh, I I know you don't see everything, uh, but listen, my friend, uh, it's time to get ready. Uh, It's time to prepare for the blast uh, because God's about to do something. Uh, Oh, give him a shout of praise. Oh, oh, can I tell you, uh, it's not church as usual. Uh, it's not about a song and a message. Uh, but I'm just trying to hear, I tell you everything this morning uh, just to tell you right now, uh, begin to prepare yourself. Uh, God's about to burst something in your spirit. Uh, listen, uh, there is a well of living water uh, that God's releasing. Uh, and there's a time and a place uh, that's coming very quickly uh, where we uh, are going to be released to shout with a great shout. Uh, and and there is strongholds coming down uh, and there is new beginnings uh, for the church of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet this morning. Hallelujah. This morning I'm simply going to tell you this, the same words that the Lord told Joshua, be strong and very courageous. Be strong and very courageous. There is some priest that's about to move with the glory of God. This morning, oh, this morning, I don't want you to hear my voice, but I want you to hear the Spirit of God. Because when this takes place, when that sound in the spirit is released, the sound of a ram's horn, and there's a great shout that comes forth, it's 
when this takes place, walls of resistance and fortified places will crumble due to the shout and the blast from the priesthood. I want to say this to you right now this morning. It's not because I'm standing here. But as men and women of God, I know we're all called to be kings and priests. We read that in Scripture and this and that. But I want to talk about the priesthood just for a moment. The priesthood is the ministers of the gospel. Over the next three months, I would encourage you to pray greatly for the priesthood. We're just mere men, mere women, just like you, following after God. But there is a weight and a heaviness that we are operating and working under that cannot be described. There is such intensity in this hour and this season that they need to be uplifted. I'm not asking you just to pray for me, but I'm asking you to pray for every minister, every ministry. But I am going to be a little bold and say, pray especially for me. Because I don't want to, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to lead you astray in any way, shape, or form. And I don't ever want to get in here and give my opinion but I want to relate to you the word of the Lord, but also what God is depositing into me. And, and those of you that are here with us continually, you know that it's, I'm very careful to say that thus saith the Lord. But this is what I sense in my spirit today. God is taking the priesthood into a manner and a place for them to touch and to be exposed to his glory. Listen, when they picked up that Ark of the Covenant, the priesthood, as they began to walk that path around Jericho every day, they was under the glory. Hear me. God's positioning us to be uniquely positioned where the glory and the presence of God is not just hovering over us, but is on us, is touching us because of where we're getting ready to step into. It's been a fortified place. It's been a stronghold. But I believe in my spirit that in the midst of all of the ashes, because this is what I think, this nation as well as others, I don't know if this is literally or if this is spiritually. You let the Holy Spirit discern with you how this may be for you, but I personally think it may be a little of both. That's my opinion. I didn't say the Lord told me it was. But this nation as well as the others, other nations in the world, I believe come the end of October, we're going to see a dust cloud from the destruction. And men are going to marvel of the uncovering and the exposing and of the exposing of evil in such a manner that in the midst of the dust clouds there's going to be an illuminating light called the church and they're going to witness the church advancing into fortified places and strongholds are going to be broken I am believing and I am going by faith I don't know what this is going to look like but even as I'm sitting here speaking to you now, God is depositing in my spirit. And I'm going to, by faith, even say right now, and I've not even thought about this till right now, the Lord simply says, if November is going to be what you're telling them that's going to be, then you need to prepare for revival fires. November, we'll start November with revival. I have no idea what that'll look like, but that's what we're going to do. November is going to be a time of renewing and refreshing. You're going to be weary from the battle. You're going to be tired from the toil and I want you to hear me the toil is going to intensify for the next three months but know this you're not alone but God's going to release in the spiritual realm a sound and we're going to be released to give a blast and a shout 
And as we shout at the beginning of November, I don't know what it's going to look like. I'm not basing it on what happens in the political system. I'm not, no matter what happens in that arena, there is getting ready to be a new beginning for the people of God. So I'm asking you to prepare for the blast this morning. There's something moving. Dear Heavenly Father, right now as we stand in your presence, Lord, we just steal ourselves in your presence. Lord, maybe there's one that's weary this morning. Maybe there's one that's wayward. Maybe there's one that's battling the spirit of fear today. Anxiousness is upon them. The uncertainty is engulfing them. Lord, I pray right now for the peace of God just to settle down upon them. God, as we stand in your presence, right now, we commit to you to prepare ourselves for a great shout. Lord, we thank you in advance right now for the fortified places to be destroyed for the advancement that's coming to the church. Lord, as men and women of God, we position ourselves to be that which you're calling us to be. Lord, help us in this season to put on the whole armor of God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. This morning, right now, This message has touched your heart in any way, shape, or form as they just began to lead us in worship right now. I'm going to ask you, are you willing to say to yourself tonight, or this morning rather, I willingly position myself to keep circling, to experience the favor of God and the anointing of God. If that's you this morning, I'm going to ask you to step out of your seat and come. You can stand or kneel around the front of this building, but we want to pray. We want to have a time of prayer this morning. If you want special prayer today, we'll pray with you. Maybe you want fresh impartation of the Holy Spirit. There's no time like the present. Let's prepare ourselves for the blast this morning.